Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome to Effects Maniac. This is your guy Sayed Mahmoud Amiri and welcome to the part 2 of the Typhlo water condensation tutorial. So this can be the dynamic version. So I just posted a tutorial like last night as the airplane is just moving through. So I'll just wait for that. All right, so the airplanes are now gone, so hopefully we can get back to this tutorial. All right, so uh, in this uh, part two, it's going to be a very quick one. So I'll show you guys how to create the dynamic condensation. Uh, it was like the static version in this tutorial, the last one. So they're, they're not really moving, but in this one, I'll show you guys how to make them move. And like they'll just some of the drops will fall down uh, across the surface of the object and it'll accumulate the other droplets basically creating sort of a very cool effect I'm myself am not sure what I'm saying but let's just get to the tutorial right so okay um uh, first I've already opened tie flow so just let's just create a new tie flow so it'll just be here and yeah then I'm gonna go to modify open editor and just going to add a birth because we want to birth some particles and the thing we want to do is we want it to be static so just zero to zero all right and uh, I want to be like 2,000 particles and I want them to be on the surface of this object so just gonna add a position object and pick this part of the can um, only like this much if, if you want you can just go ahead and set an ID but like I want I want this much so it's fine all right um, so if you want if you want if you don't want it to be on the top so you can just go ahead and select like the faces from the front view I wouldn't really do it but uh, just for the understanding purposes select these and go down to material IDs so set it to ID 3 and now just go back to the tie flow and I'm just gonna go into selected faces density by ID 3 so now we only have particles on the ID 3 so that's basically it all right and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a force operator because we want them to move down so just increase the decrease the gravity negative 0.8 or something so now they're just moving down but we do, we don't want them to move down we want them to be moving down across the surface of the object so so the thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna add an object bind make sure to put it below the position object and select this object so now they are sort of moving but we need to lock it to the surface but they're not moving really because the friction is a hundred percent so it's a hundred percent sticking to the surface so if you change this to like sixty percent so now they are moving across the faces or the surface of the object alright so the other thing I want to do is I want to give them some shape so I'll just add a shape operator and just move it here I want the type to be 3d maybe a mid-res geosphere going to display and select geometry so now we have them they're moving across the face of the object but the thing I want to do is I want to delete them whenever they reach this bottom of the object so in order to do that I'm just going to create a box here so just encompassing the bottom of this object and we don't really need to see it so right click object properties and I'm gonna go to display as box just like that and I'm gonna go back to tie flow and add a surface test so surface test is basically saying that test if this object like if this surface so we're picking a surface and we're, we're having conditions so like if it is inside this volume then we can do something with the particles so it means that if the particles are inside this volume then we want to delete them so we'll add a delete operator and by the way to bring up the search I'm just hitting the tap uh, key on the keyboard 
So just tab, delete, and I'm just going to link it, and that's it. So whenever they're moving inside that volume, they're getting deleted. All right. So just select this, and we can hide it. We don't need to see it. So they're just moving down. And the other thing is we can add a bit of mm, turbulent noise to them because we don't want them to kind of move very, you know, straight. So we just have some sort of random movement in them. So maybe a little bit more, 0.4. So just like that. Now we want these particles to sort of, uh, you know, trail, have like trails. So you can you can do it a couple of different ways, but the easiest way is to add a branch operator. So what is essentially doing is what it says. So it's just creating branches. So it grows, spawn child particles which travel predictably divergent angles. Some crazy physics, but the the gist of it is that they're basically going to create more particles off of these particles all right so we need to copy this event and paste it not instance but just paste it and we need to delete the birth and the position object and I'm just going to link it to the event to the branch operator all right and put the surface test beneath it uh, so what I want to do is if I change the color so that you can see the newly born particles they're just getting born from the original particles, but they're just in the same spot, right? So what I want to do is I want to first off go into the branch and turn down this distance. Make sure you don't turn it down to zero because it's going to hang your system. So just one, I think, like it will create more, less of a distance between these objects and it'll create more branching. But the thing we need to do is we need to go into the object plane for this and increase the friction to like 80%. So now what what is happening here is that we're having the particle sort of trail. But the other thing is we we too need to delete these particles whenever they hit the surface. So what I'm going to do, and I'm hoping that it does make sense to you guys, and if it doesn't, feel free to ask a question or anything, any problems you might face during the tutorial in the comment section below. And as always, I'll be more than glad to answer them. All right, so just shift drag the surface test onto the second event and right click, switch output side and just drag it here. So they two will be deleted. But we don't want them to be like this size. So we can just add a scale and I want them to sort of, uh, you know, by the time, create like a trail effect. So just go uh, set the uh, scale to relative add and just turn this down to like 95. So they'll gradually scale down and create more of a trailing effect. So I think we have a little bit more particles than we need. So I think this much is fine. All right, and I think this is looking pretty cool. So you can do it continuously. It doesn't have to be like one. You can go ahead and set it to like what 100 frames. So now they'll go across 100 frames, you know. So just like that. But what I want is to be just zero to zero, just once. All right, and now we need to create the uh, the smaller droplets. So they will these will be used as a force for those droplets to kind of like accumulate them and delete them over time. So I'm just going to create a new tie flow. It's basically, if you click here, it is the same as going to the create panel and create new tie flow, so, which is already done here. So I'm going to do a very simple setup here. I'm just going to add a birth and a position object, just like before. And the birth is going to be zero to zero. We want a lot of particles, like 10,000 particles. And the position object needs to be this object. Pick. And as you can see, we have them. We can change the color to a little bit more of a color so that we can see it. All right. And um, we can add a shape to this. 
and we're going to go into 3D and since they're very small I can add a geosphere low res and display geometry and uh, just scale them down so go to the scale make sure they're like 40 with 50 percent variation and I think we need a lot more particles so just make it like what 30,000 particles and in this case so what we want to do is we want to use the initial particle trails as a force to move them or just do something with these newly born with these red particles alright so there's a very cool operator called particle force so what it does is it's using another particle system as a force to influence these particles so you can just go ahead and pick this tie flow so this is the tie flow that uh, we've created first so just click on it and now as you can see even if we turn off the display for these um, even these you can see that they are sort of moving those particles you can see that they're moving pretty they are just influenced by those uh, initial trailing particles alright so we don't want we don't want like that we want them to be deleted so we can add a uh, property test so what we want is uh, whenever a particle is moving so we can go property test whenever a particle is moving we want to basically we want it to get deleted and that will give us the impression of it being accumulated by these trails so we want it to be based on velocity magnitude velocity is basically uh, speed and if it is greater than like what 10 then we can go ahead and add hit tab and add a delete modifier and just delete it so now let's see here if they are getting deleted uh, they're not because the threshold test value is a little too high so maybe like two so now they will surely why not if it is one All right, so how about we set this value to zero and that will work. So I think you can see that the the areas are a little too large. So even in the particle force, we have some uh, radius. So we can go with shape radius. So they're a little bit more accurate. So whenever there's that, and then they're going to be deleted. So in this case, we're going to need a lot more particles on our main sort of uh, particles, maybe uh, 40,000. And right now, uh, this is basically the effect. And what you can do right now is, we've already done it in the previous tutorial, so I'm not going to be doing the lighting and the meshing and everything. But you can just go ahead and create a tie measure. So just go into tie flow, tie measure, and uh, just go ahead and pick this tie flow. Pick. So they're going to be like that. So we can go ahead and turn down the size and turn down the resolution so that we're having our trails. And we can enable the filter, which will make it much more, um, you know, sort of organic looking. So now we might have to like increase our size in order to see the filter and just turn the voxel down. So just uh, this one too. I don't want it to be that much. So it's just it's a matter of playing around with the effect in order to create something that is looking organic and just like that, you know. And you can you can go ahead and pick this tie flow too with the measure. Or you can create a separate measure because there are like two two of a small particles. So you just delete the tie flow two, create another tie measure, and just go ahead and pick this tie flow. And we want them to be very very small. So just like that, and decrease the voxel size to 0.2 and just decrease the size as well so just go ahead 
into the second time measure. Let's decrease it. So we're having these very tiny small particles. So it's just a matter of playing around with these values to get the result that you're looking. So now we can go into the tie flows and uh, turn, not turn them off, just turn the display off. So click on the display, turn them off, and this one too. So I wouldn't say it is perfect, but the thing I would say is that you can go ahead and play around with it and, and get some more beautiful results. Uh, definitely should uh, sort of decrease the voxel size for the first one. So 0.1, and it'll take some time to update, but you know, it's just a matter of, yeah, you can see that we have a lot more detail right now, and you can go into this and just turn down the size to 0.4 or 0.5. It's just going to take some time because, you know, the lower resolution you go, the more time it's going to take, but the more realistic and cool is going to look so maybe a little bit more 0.34 and you can increase the variation to to give it yeah I think that looks a bit better that looks natural alright and you can you can go ahead and do the same thing for these particles to delete them in the bottom but just I'll leave it for you guys and the material on lighting and shading part I've already done in the previous tutorial so uh, you can go ahead and check that out the uh, the part one so I've done the lighting and everything so this was basically the effect so it's it's dynamic it's moving and if you had the material and everything it'll look really good so I hope you guys have enjoyed it and learned something from this tutorial and if you did make sure to uh, show your appreciation by subscribing to my channel and liking the video and sharing it with your friends and also support us on our new music channel actually the music that I'm using in this tutorial is actually this one the party one which is really cool I love it and also make sure to follow me on Instagram so check out some of my works and just follow me there if you want and this was the today's tutorial until next time enjoy working